Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Ladies, doing things with Steve. Today, a lot of people have been asking me about black powder. I mean, for years, you know, they see me out in the woods hunting with it. Uh, you know, different friends. They like to get into it, but they don't really understand it. So today, I'm going to show you how to take care of a, this is a Pieta uh, Cabela's. It's a replicated 1851 Colt Navy 44 steel. You really can't see it probably, but it's got some really neat, uh, I don't know what you call that, in the steel area. If you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about, kind of a marvelous look. And uh, up here, they got warships engraved in it and all the way around. It's probably hard to see it. But this is a good gun. That's a good gun. Today, we're cleaning it. We went out the other day, and I popped it off out there in the state fishing area. And uh, it needs clean. Now, this separates the barrel from here. There's a screw right here. I'm going to take that screw off. Bingo! Now the idea is to be able to pull this out. Now you understand, during the battlefield, well, as long as we're getting shot at, this is what they had to do, man. You know what I mean? If they're stuck, screwed up, I mean, what do you see how long it takes to reload one of these things? Are you going to think people are going to be shooting at a mug when they're doing it? Anyway, Separate the barrel. Here, cock it back. That slides right off. Pretty unbelievable, right? <laughs> when you think about it, that's it? No, it's not really. I'm not going to do it because it doesn't need it. Uh, you can also take the screws out of here, pull it apart, and get at that mechanism inside, but you know, this doesn't need it. So I'm going to get down to cleaning it now. Got a cleaning rod. Now I got to find the right things that fit it. I want to use this on the end of it to help so little hold this. Copper, doggone it. Grab that bad boy and run it through there a couple times. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't know if you guys see that powder coming out of the end of it. What? All right. Why not? Now. cylinder to load it up. Just kind of get in there and do it once over lightly. It was only shot six rounds. It's not that really dirty. But if you're like me, keep it clean. Keep it clean. And that's for that. Now I'm going to take this part off from it. And I'm going to take this part right here. No, I'm not. The doggone thing is not going to screw on there. I forgot to get the, uh, the right size of that on there. I won't be able to probably use that one. No. So, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take this bad boy and put it right back on here because it doesn't really matter. I'm going to put this on there like that. And I'm going to stick this on there to clean a better spot in there. Push it through is all it's going to need. Bingo! That's good. A little bit here. Now, if 
I had fired this gun a whole bunch of times and it would have been needing a whole lot more cleaning, then I would use a nipple remover and I'd take each one of these nipples off. But no worry. Because I got a nipple poker. So I will take the nipple poker and just poke it down in each one of the nipples. You'll see later on what these are responsible for because without without the nipple and without the nipples being clean inside, there's not going to be any kind of an ignition. No ignition, no gunfire. So that bastard down. Uh, I'm just going to take this, clean the extra powder from the shot that comes out of it. Now, if you've ever shot a black powdered pistol, we have many times. They're really fun to shoot at nighttime because, I mean, they'll throw a trail of uh, you know, flame coming out the barrel like that. But when you put the gun together, there's it's not tight like a regular pistol. So, uh, smokes and flames kind of go everywhere on baby. Yeah. <laughs> They're really interested. Anyway, just going to clean this off and give it a once over. Um, it's all part of keeping it clean. Keeping it clean. So, I'm going to come over to this part here. What you do here basically is really not a whole lot. Take some, uh, you know, your cleaning materials here and uh, wipe a little bit of that off if you want. Down here, wipe some of that off. Of course, up here, because you're going you're gonna to see, uh, like I said, when they shoot, they're, they're not in a bullet. They're not in a case. So, uh, you know, if you're not watching what you're doing, when you, when you shoot this gun and it comes off the barrel, there's a space between the barrel and, and the chamber here. When that shot goes off, if you don't have it loaded right, or you have a little extra something here, it's called a backfire. It'll shoot. And then the spark will cause one of the other chambers to go off. It's not got a barrel. It's only going to work when it's like that going through the barrel. If one of these other ones ignite while it goes on. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've shot them before. And, and my wife, we, I, you can feel uh, pieces of the, of the bullet even, the the. the the, the the ball, what they like to call it, not a bullet, the ball, the piece of lead, or the shots that come out. Maybe I can get the old lady to, uh, the old lady, maybe I can get Lovey to take and find that picture of Dolphin. And when we were shooting and it was real rainy out that day and kind of cloudy out, and you can actually see freaking smoke coming out of the barrel this far. I'm going to try to get it and see if she can't get a shot of that and maybe throw it in on this video and show you. Anyway, the idea here is to clean it. I have some stuff they call blast, uh, and I really like it because it's more of a dry uh, oil. This, you'll find any open place here where the trigger is. Give it a good douse and spray it in there. It's not going to hurt a doggone thing, man. It's only going to help it. Here, spray it. All over in here. Spray the trigger mechanism real good. The hammer. Inside. You know, think, man, this is really easy cleaning one of these guns. And, hey, and you know what they tell you in the instructions to clean them? I'm kind of going out of my way cleaning it, you know, a little nicer. Soapy water. Get you a tub of soapy water. Take the gun apart. Drop it right in there. Leave it sitting in there for an hour, two hours. Take it out, brush it off, clean it off, oil it down. Water. Put your gun in water. Who think of it? Uh, anyway, this is good and oiled down. It's got nice action to it. If you hear one, two, three, and there's no. Uh,
bushings to it. The area here this goes up and down to help turn it. So there's no need for me to get inside here. Now sometimes when it's together, and this is on here like this, you'll pull the trigger. And one of the blasting caps, the power cap that shoots it, uh, they'll fall apart. And sometimes you go to pull the hammer back and the doggone thing will fall in between here or down in here. And it really, it, it, it jerks you. Then sometimes you might have to take it apart and uh, do your thing with it. So pretty much now, uh, I'm done. You know, pretty much, that was pretty simple of a job to do, but I'm going to do one more thing because I'm going to run some... Uh, some gun grease on a uh, on a new tube here. I didn't want to use that dog on there. Pissed me off doing that. But anyway, I'm gonna try to find the uh, right thing here that I want. I reckon that's all I had to do in the first place was take the freaking fitting off from it. So, get some of this here goo. Like a, like grease. That's what it is, it's grease. There. Smear that around on there real nice. Make sure that's on the outside of that. And just run that right through here. Grease it up. No problem. No. Don't grease that up. <laughs> you got to put powder in there. No grease in that. Take this apart. Wipe my hands down here a little bit and see if I can't put this on the gun back together. I remember how I do it. I do it blindfold. I like it. I took my 50 caliber apart. Uh, well, I did <laughs> many times. Not only one, when I went out hunting with my son. <sighs> he didn't take time to clean the gun, although we sat there. I'd tell him, watch me step by step and then do it with me. That's the only way it got done, but usually it was how to get done, baby. Yeah. He'd take off, run, go see his buddy, and buzz off, you know what I'm saying? And old dad had to sit there. All right, same thing with the gun grease here. Put that on there. And it'd be liberal. You don't have to be chumpy about it. Get it on that bad boy. It's not going to hurt nothing. That, you know, probably the more the better in the situation. So, grease it up real well. Same thing with any kind of Earl. Or oil that's in here. It's not going to hurt it. You know, it's going to keep it nice. Now, we're going to try to set this bad doll back where it was supposed to be. Hey, uh, did I ever, what did I do with that there? Uh, I already did that, didn't I? Yeah. That looks nice and clean. Okay, I'm going to stick this on the gun back. Put it, uh, put it on there. on there nice. Slide it back. Pull that hammer back a little bit. Voila. Now while it's still got a little grease on there, you can take this. Uh, <laughs> I was sticking it in a barrel. <laughs> I dummied up there for a minute, guys. Don't listen to what I do. Just watch what I do. All right. Now there. We got them back together again. Looks like it's good to me. Now, this piece. I'm going to put a little uh, gun choke grease on it. When it comes to black powder, the whole freaking idea of it. And uh, anybody that's ever owned them for any amount of time and knows anything about them, the whole idea, keep them wet. Not water. Water's the worst enemy unless you're cleaning it. They tell you, put it right in soapy water. And I did it. My shotgun, I just took the nipples off, stuck uh, uh, 
utensil things up inside there so the water couldn't come out. I just poured it down the barrel, let it sit there for an hour, and uh, put it back together. Worked perfect. Kept it clean. Anyway, I'm going to put this bad boy back inside there. Go this way with it. There's a little clip right here. you got to push that down to get it inside there. Now, I just made to do that while I'm trying to do the camera thing. Slid in. No problem. Push it in. Pushed it in. That spring part pops up on that side. Now, like I was saying earlier, could you imagine? I mean, for... <laughs> Any reason whatsoever, you're you're on the battlefield, man, during the Civil War. That's what you got. Your gun jams up, it breaks down. They think you're able to take that screw out of there, pull this pin, break it down, and uh, put it back together while bullets are flying by you. <laughs> or in you. I, uh, I get fascinated with the Civil War. I'm fascinated with anything that has to do with the 1800s. I don't know if you guys know who Steve Bannon is. He worked in the White House for a while under the Trump administration. A lot of people could you help me with this, baby? And it, my fingers, I, I have a really hard time uh, putting a screw in that hole. There. Anyway, Steve Bannon. A lot of people didn't like him because of his beliefs and his thoughts. Pretty, pretty, pretty much, uh, I don't know. I liked his thoughts. His thoughts were, wouldn't it be nice if America could go back? To the 1880s. We go back the way the 1880s were. People taught their kids. You want to whip your kids' ass? There was no problem with it. I mean, you know, nobody wants to whip their kids' butt and, and harm them. But, you know, wouldn't it be nice to go back to where that was the time? Um, families were families. 1880s, 1850s, everybody worked together, you know, all you had to have is a skill, and you were going to make it, just a skill, I don't give a damn, raise sheep, raise cows, raise chickens, eggs, cost of living wasn't like it was today, and you know, a lot of people think, you know, well, you're enjoying life with the electricity and the flushing of the toilet. It's not my choice. But this was the world I was born into. Right? Maybe, I mean, it, yeah. it, honestly, if me and my wife could move out in the country somewhere and be able to live off the grid, we wouldn't be living here in town. For sure. It's just not feasible for us right now, you know? And, you know, 20, 30 years ago, it would have been something more fun and interested to work for and had. But, um, I've always had them thoughts, it's just that it, it didn't go that way. But, I mean, if you think about it, you know, you raise your own whatever, <laughs> whatever you feel like eating, you go out and you go hunting. Today's pretty wild. Anyway, I love them days. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure when people actually would sit down and think about it, if you never had a freaking cell phone or you never had a fucking computer or a television, how are you going to miss that? You know, so people today can't say, well, I don't know that I could live back in the 1850s because they didn't have blah, 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 blah. They didn't even know what it was. So if you were living back in them days, you would have no idea what it'd be like to be able to pick up a, a freaking telephone or, you know, snap a picture and 
do all the things that we can do today that pretty much is driving half the people out here nuts. I can't stand the cell phone. Help me out here. Tell them, only no. until I started doing videos, I had nothing to do with the computer. Nothing. My kids, my wife couldn't show you. Now, there's people watching this that'll say, oh, yeah. You could walk up to me and say, hey, check this video out on YouTube. I'd tell you, hey, you show me that, I'm going to take your freaking phone away. So when my kids, they don't even show me it. I don't care. It's all a bunch of fake crap anyway. You know what I mean? And I'm not into it today. I'm only into it to put this out there. But uh, technology, that's the way I feel about technology. You know, when it comes to stuff like helping my heart out, technology is a great thing. But it's not a computer, and I'm never going to let them put anything in my brain that would answer a phone. Uh, you know, I'm not no tune on theorist. I'm just saying the way science is today and technology today is I feel sorry for the next people. You know, if they look back a hundred years from now, are they going to say, damn, I wish I lived back then? You know, trust me, you guys, every one of us that have more of a peace of mind, your kids would be running around acting half nuts because, you know, they call it some bipolar, um, help me out again, ADD, ADD uh, you know, uh, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's because your kids are born and being raised the way I are today. Me and my brother, we lived on a farm. Now, I'm talking to all the whole 70s. I was born in 58. By the time I was 68, 10 years old, I ran my own. So did my brother, two years older than me. We were on the river. My wife's met my family. She knows. She knows everything I say is true. We did what we wanted to do. We didn't have nobody. Mom and dad went to work. We didn't have nobody during the summer vacation tell us what to do. We didn't have a video game. We didn't have a TV. We had a blast. But God, I miss them days. Uh, my brother is deceased. He committed suicide at 10, 92, 93. Uh, basically, the only one that could ever share them memories with me, you know, was him. And uh, less stress. You know, I, I believe kids today that are raised today, I feel sorry for them. Cops are always on your asses. Can't drive out in the country and drink a freaking beer at 17, 18 years old, not bother nobody. Oh, yeah, we did. The cops told us in Hastings, get it out of town and we ain't going to mess with you. If you drive around Hastings in that little town of 12,000, Christian people see it and they're going to call us. We have to do something. You never got hassled. I mean, it was, you know, today, social media, I, I, you know, I'm just going on because of what I'm saying and I'm doing it. Social media, I told my wife years ago, it's going to harm people. You know what it felt like to ever get denied face to face when you asked a girl out on a date when you were 16 years old? Raise your hand if you know what that feels like. To walk up to that girl and say, hey, you want to go out? No, I already got a boyfriend. That's understandable. You know what it's like to walk up to another girl and say, hey, man, you want to go out on a date tonight? And she says, oh, yeah, I can't wait to go on a date. I think that would be fun. That's contact. That, that, that's contact. Them are, that's personal contact. I never asked a girl out on mine. I never hooked up <laughs> with a girl online, and I couldn't imagine ever would want to, like buying a car online. If I can't kick that freaking tire, I'm not going to buy something I've never seen. I ordered nothing online. I ordered your lady a pair of socks here, man, for Christmas. Beautiful, weren't they, baby? Yes, they were. Had the nice battery pack in them. You plugged them in. Electric socks. They've been around forever, uh, especially in the northern tier states when I was younger. But they're improved, you know. Oh, man, them really look nice, and they're only like $27. Man, they got to be happening. Well, dumb Steve takes a chance on ordering them, and when she gets them, after Christmas, they run on two AA batteries that had to be rechargeable so that you had to get a recharging system to recharge your two batteries to put back in your socks. And if they weren't rechargeable batteries, they weren't going to run the socks right. 
Walmart. We bought them through a Walmart site online. We ended up getting our money back, but it took a couple weeks to do it. And so, yeah, but only one sock worked and one didn't. Oh, oh yeah, and one sock worked and one didn't. What I'm getting at is the socks that we opened, they were not the pair of socks that they showed and said they were going to send us. You know, so I don't like to spend money online, man. Uh, and I certainly ain't going to ask anybody out online. So if you guys are out there doing that, stop it. Stop it. I believe a girl would love it if you just ran up on her and said, hey, man, cuss. Want to go out? All right. She said, she, hey, mom, she wants to go out with me. Okay. Saturday at the movie. <laughs> I might be old school, you guys, but you know what? That sucks. I'm going to put this down for now because I've been jabbered on long enough. I'm going to wipe it down a little bit. And uh, later on, I'm going to show you how to load it. But <laughs> right now, i got to think about what I was even talking about and why I even babbled on the way I did. But, I mean, you know, if it's interest you, it interests you, you know. And I, I guarantee the people that are out there that are my age are saying, Amen. Amen, brother. A Amen. Mm -hmm. I want that reaction. Yes, I want to go out with you. Oh, can I have a hug? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> We're back. Check it out. I babbled on enough so wife told me to get to get to going with the show here. This is a measuring for your powder. Slides off, open, you can pour the powder in, you'll see how it works. This screws this unloosens and you can it tells you how many grains of powder to use. This one goes up to a uh, 110, 120 grains. Now, the rifles I had, the 50 calibers, they actually shot um, 150 grain. But I want to explain something there too. I use I use the Pyrodex. I ordered this from Cabela's, and I think this is probably one of the better powders. I've used a couple different ones, but this is this is the best for a granulated powder. Now. I've also used, but don't have them right here with me, is another powder that comes in a pill form. You know, the roundness of your, uh, of the cylinder. Just a little pill, just drop it in there. It's no measuring, no nothing. Um, the 50 calibers I had, I'd put three of them in, or two, whichever I wanted to shoot, 100 uh, grains or 150 grains. Plop, plop, boom. Same with the shotgun. Blah, blah, boom. Makes it faster. Anyway, what I'm going to do here is I need 24 uh, grains of powder put in here. So Lovey's going to fill that up with powder for me while I do this other stuff. Can I have that funnel? Huh? What do you want? The funnel? Funnel. All right. There's my 44 balls. They come in 50. I'm going to need six of them. You can get regular smooth ones like this here, what they call conical. I've used them both. I don't see any difference in them. Basically the same price. Lead shot, not steel. Let's go to the top there. Huh? all the way up. Now, she filled this up for me and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Hold that again. First click, you can spin it around. Okay, you can see a spot here where I'm going to put the powder in. Powder's in there. 
Now I need what they call a wad. Like a little wool round wad. You put that inside there so that uh, that actually will protect that backfire, not telling you a crossfire. If you just put the bullet inside there, the ball inside there without that wad in there, you might not have that protection. And it warns you, you know, not dummy up. Now, this here part comes down. I'm going to try to explain this the way I can. The way I'm going to slide this over to where this lands on top of the ball. It should almost be behind me. See how that's laying on top of the ball inside there? This compresses the ball inside. Give it a good squeeze. Perfect. That's ready to go. Next. Powder. Wad. Ball. Remember what I was talking about during the Civil War? Taking a gun apart. That's one obstacle of this whole situation. But for crying out loud, could you imagine while you're getting shot at, your buddies next to you getting shot? You know, and you have to load your gun this way. Now, granted, on the other side, you know, depending if you're north or south, if you're on the other side, Them poor guys are doing the same thing. Same thing. You know, what do you call ugly fighting? Fighting in the jungle? Fighting over there in Afghanistan and all them other places? War is hell. <laughs> you know, if you want to go even beyond that, go back to the Viking days or go back to the days of you know, 1700s, 1600s, you know, where a lot of it was just basically hacking each other to death. You know, war. Check it out, you guys. Listen to a song called, uh, it's by a band called Disturbed. The name of the song is Vengeful One. Vengeful One. Bet you can't watch that video one time. Like a Lay's potato chip. You're going to watch it again. Now, it's some good hardcore rock. Definitely. So, enjoy the hard rock to it. But understand the words to this song. It's all animation. And the video, the video is awesome, man. You, it, once you see the video, you watch it again. And you might even tell your friends to watch Not it. Any more one? No, I think we're good. I mean, this is it. This is it. Uh, watch this video, and but I understand the words to it. Uh, I get to talking about politics once in a while, but this isn't going to be a Democrat or Republican thing. Or I wouldn't even be telling you to watch the video. I've actually wanted to put the music on and put the name on it in the background and say listen to it. But now I'm going to tell you. Listen to it because it's about our government and uh, money mongering whores for war. The ones that are out there just making a killing every time we're at war. Now our government, we do real good at war. I mean, Vietnam War, basically, we started that war just to have a war to get, you know, things back in order in the United States. Money being made again, we it's like we almost need war. So, uh, listen to the song, and the song is basically how our government and how the news media is, you know, messing with your head, trying to get you to believe one thing. You know, they're almost like robots. They're being told, you tell the people this. You tell the people that, they're going to believe you, and, you know, this, this is what's going on. But it's coming a time, I think, today, you know, and like I said, I don't give a damn if you're a Republican or a Democrat. I, I like you as a person. I don't, you know, hey, if you're a Catholic, I can't talk to you because I'm a Lutheran. It's kind of stupid. 
But to get back to it, it's, a, it's not a Democrat or Republican thing. So the younger generation, wake up. You know, the news media is out there telling you one thing. And don't you think that CNN and all them liberal bastards ain't trying to screw your heads up? Fox and uh, America's Voice are the one today and Axios. I like watching them. But I pay attention, too. You know, I know when a story's been a little stretched out of line. And I hope you guys do the same thing. And if you watch this video, it's just an awesome video. But it's not just the video of the animation. It's the words behind the song. Listen to the words behind the song and try to learn by the song. Because they're telling you pretty much to um, screw the media. You know, they're programmed to tell you only one thing. All right. Next time you see me, I'm going to take this bad dog out and I'm going to pop it off and let you see, uh, you know, what the 44 can do. So, that'll be down the road a little bit. I, I usually keep this loaded for up to uh, a couple months and it doesn't seem to lose any kind of power or anything else like that. Now, the way this is loaded, gunpowder, wad, bullet. I can carry this gun anywhere I want to carry it. Not on me in public. I can have this gun in my automobile, especially if I'm going out to state land or uh, we go out to the shooting match out there at uh, Terre Haute Clay. Uh, out 63. And um, they're illegal to carry, you know. Now, law doesn't register this gun as being loaded. I was telling you about the nipples. These, these are the firing mechanisms. It's called a cap. The cap. <clears throat> Here I am again trying to use my fingers. I'm a butterfinger son of a gun, man. You got your aid there. Yeah, I don't know really want to load it up just to show them that though. Uh, <laughs> Why is it when I turn the camera on everything wants to screw up on me? I didn't have it over far enough. Anyway, this has got a hollow part and it's got a little blasting cap thing in the middle of it. It goes on the nipple just like that. Now, this gun's ready to fire. That cylinder's ready to fire. Now, riding around, there's absolutely no reason to have that on there. And it's just going to cause you problems. Why do you have to have a loaded gun? I leave them loaded in the house. But when I go out to state land or I go out in the country, they come off and I put them back on. And now when I'm talking about state land, you know, there's a lot about knowing what you're doing in black powder and what you can legally have and legally can't do. If you're legal to have a weapon, uh, let's say you want to have an AK-47 or a 223 Bushmaster, or let's talk more like a pistol. You got a 9mm, you got a Glock, 357, whatever. Uh, but you don't have a license to carry it. You can carry that gun on your side on state property without a permit. You don't have to have a, govern, uh, a government carry permit, conceal. You're allowed on state property to carry a pistol. Everybody is. I just want that to be known. So if you ever maybe want to, you know, go walking out in the woods or something like that, you feel a little safer. The reason why they changed that law quite a few years ago is because of all the mess cooking that was going on in the country. I'm not making this up, I'm telling you. And uh, farmers and, you know, especially hunters were coming across, you know, cooking factories. So people wanted to be able to protect themselves out in the woods when they're out mushroom hunting or whatever you want to do. You're allowed 
to pack iron on state property. And uh, they don't like you just going out and shooting just to scare the animals. But, uh, you know, you're allowed to go out there and you're allowed to do it. So, um, don't take my guns away from me. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, if law enforcement or something changed laws and I can't have a black powder gun, then I'm going to have a Bushmaster 223. I will not leave myself and my family without protection. Nobody has the right to tell me that, I don't believe. So, uh, you'll see me out there. We'll pop it off one day and I'll throw the video out. Until then, uh, I hope you like the video. A lot of rambling on and bullshit, but I kind of like doing that too because I feel like I have a, uh, a platform for at least some people to hear and some people to listen to. And um, possibly, you know, you guys will hear something like that. And maybe have a conversation with somebody else. Um, until later. Later. Can't hear you, baby. Let lovers love. Haters. It's not over. I'm not, hey. Not gonna tell you the lovers love and all that because the videotape ain't over. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Couple. Dang, it's hot out. Hey, I'm back. I was going to go out <clears throat> and shoot the gun, but I'm not going to, I'm going to put this video out. Uh, I want to say that, I want to go out to uh, Terre Haute City Clay, out on 63, it's an uh, outdoor gun shooting range that we belong to, had family uh, memberships doing stuff, and I think this fall I'm going to go out there maybe later on, probably around fall time, and uh, shoot a video out there. So I'm just going to put this video out. Hey, today's Sunday, uh, third and fourth is coming up, you guys, around the freaking corner. Uh, you guys are going to come out, and I know some of you are going to come out there, you know, like you say, we're going to have a big chili dinner on the third that night. And, uh, you know, if you guys can come out and make it, come on out and make it. Get on one of the kayaks, man, and uh, take it for a ride. You might be interested enough to go out and buy one. I got a freaking headache right now, kind of. And uh, I'm just going to end this video for now. Um, hopefully, we're going to, next Monday, we'll be putting a video out on the 4th of July, like 80. Yep. All right, get it for one of the other ones out first. I'm not sure yet. We got a couple of videos that we've already made. They're going to they're gonna be pretty interesting. Uh, so look out for them. Uh, so I am going to finish this off with, you know what, lovers keep on lovers, haters. Uh, I don't even know why I keep ending it like this anymore. Because I really have nothing more to say about love, love, hate, hate. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, y'all.